Hello and welcome to this Essentials Primer video. It's part two on sketching. My name is Robert French and I'm an Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. Alright, so sketching in SolidWorks. Sketching is pretty much the starting point for all model creation inside of SolidWorks. We refer to sketches through sketch entities. And these sketch entities include things like lines, arcs, points, rectangles, splines, a couple other different types. While we're within the software, to start a sketch we use the sketch command. This is found on the sketch command tab and a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that they've started a sketch by clicking simply the tab, but we need to make sure that we go ahead and click the sketch command itself. You can also see here that I've highlighted the sketch entity commands. You can see those different symbols there, lines, circles, rectangles, splines, and also the smart dimension which is pretty much our all-in-one tool for adding dimensions to our sketches. So remember when we're sketching here in the Essentials class, we're doing it purely in 2D. We do have 3D capability in the software for sketching, but in Essentials we'll stick to 2D. Since we're in 2D, we're on a flat face or plane for our sketch, and we want to make sure we're looking normal to that face or plane. So the analogy I'll use here is a movie theater. The green line at the bottom of the screen uh, being the movie screen. If we're sitting off to the side like this red arrow, we don't have a pure view of the screen and images might look slightly uh, uh, lopsided or distorted. We want to be looking directly at the screen like this green arrow would suggest. So for going normal to a face or a plane, once it's highlighted or once you're within a sketch, the shortcut is Control-8. Remember, remember that normal to kind of has two solutions. Looking straight at this screen is true for that long green arrow uh, in front of the screen and for the short green arrow behind the screen. If I continue to hit Control-8, I'll swap between these two different views. We can take care of this auto-rotate uh, with a setting that I'll show you where uh, I'll show you the location in the software. Alright, sketch relations. These are things slightly different than dimensions that control our geometry within a sketch. Things like horizontal, horizontal or vertical. Uh, we also have things like concentric, parallel, perpendicular, and so on. We have snapping as well. When I draw a line that is almost vertical, you know, I can't eyeball it perfectly, but I'm within a couple degrees, SolidWorks will kind of say, hey, I know what you're trying to do, and I'll go ahead and snap that line to pure vertical and add a relation for you automatically. Dimensioning. We have dimensions, individual dimensions, like horizontal, vertical, or pure distance. We also have an angle dimension, but a lot of these are captured into one tool and done all with one tool, which we call the smart dimension. Next, we have different colors inside of SolidWorks sketches. We have blue, meaning underdefined. It still has flexibility and can move. We have black, fully defined, rigid, Im immutable, can't be moved, locked down. We have red, overdefined. We can see that in the uh, top of this picture. That line is red because it's been told to have a relation of both vertical and horizontal. Well, can't do both of those at the same time. Has to be one or the other. Thus, it's overdefined. And the gold items there are not necessarily wrong in and of themselves, but because they're tied to an overdefined entity, they're not sure where they, exactly they might end up. There might be potential errors with them, but uh, they're, they're kind of hanging in limbo for the meantime. We want to aim for our sketches to be fully black, fully defined. A couple additional tips I'd like to share. Start at the origin. Always link to the origin. We want to make sure our first sketch in every part is tied to the origin in some way. Subs subsequent sketches can be uh, tied to different uh, geometry and things like that, but that first sketch tied to the origin. Knowing when you're in a sketch. I'll go over how you understand this because it presents a couple little tricks or hiccups in the software if you're not familiar. Spamming escape. I'll repeat that from my last video. Clearing out your selections and making sure you're kind of starting from a, a base level, a clear level, is important at times. But the escape key will never exit the sketch. So it's a great way to clear selections while staying inside a sketch. Pre-selecting faces or planes can be a, a helpful shortcut. And then two different ways of placing entities. Clicking individual clicks with a mouse or clicking and holding with the mouse. And we'll go over both of those. All right, let's go over a couple of the concepts here in the software. So first off, I want to talk about the auto-rotate normal to option. Inside of our options, underneath sketch, we see that option right here, first in the list. Auto-rotate normal to the sketch on creation. Very important, making sure you have the correct perspective with your sketch. 
To start a sketch itself, we are on the sketch command tab, but let's make sure we're clicking the sketch command itself. Really, uh, really need to click that button in order to execute the command. When we do so, we're prompted to start our sketch on a 2D face or plane. So it's letting us know, hey, what plane would you like to start this on? By default, SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies start with a front, top, and right plane. Let's back up though and try the pre-selection method. To select, I use my left mouse button, highlight the front plane by clicking on it once, and then clicking my sketch command. You can see that the plane has auto-rotated normal to us, we're sketching on the front plane, and we're good to go. How do I know I'm in a sketch? Well, if we look up in the top right corner, we see two options. This top left one meaning, yes, save our sketch and complete and exit the sketch, but uh, add it to our feature tree. And this X meaning exit the sketch and don't save anything I have. Up in the top left corner, we also have exit sketch. This button is similar to this top left icon. It will save whatever uh, sketches you have done currently. All right, so let's start by grabbing a line tool. I grab my line tool and I'm starting at the origin with one single left click. Now it's waiting for me to single left click for the other end point of my line. Since I'm using the single left click method, I'm doing what we call chaining. One left click after another, chaining one line entity to the end of the previous one. I can also use, I just hit my escape key there to uh, exit my line tool, and now I'll grab the line tool one more time. If I left click and hold and then release, you'll notice the line tool is still active, but I'm no longer chaining together entities. So that's the subtle difference between the single individual left click and the click hold and let go methods. I'm going to use a I spammed escape to get rid of my line tool, drag a box around everything using left click and hit my delete key to get rid of all those entities. All right, let's talk about relations and snapping. So you'll notice when I'm drawing this line, once again starting from the origin, uh, if I drag it out horizontally, once I get really close to horizontal, the line kind of just jolts to horizontal and I get that little yellow symbol with a horizontal line in it. That little yellow symbol with a line in it is a relation that's ready to add the horizontal relation to this line if I were to complete uh, my, my entry of it, if I were to left click one more time. You'll see something similar but a vertical yellow relation for a vertical relationship when I get close to vertical. So I'm going to kind of place this at some arbitrary angle. Right? The only relation that was automatically added is the coincident of the endpoint of the line to the origin. That's because it I started right at the origin. I can still left click right using left click selection and we want to make sure actually that we're not selecting the midpoint like I just did right there. Simply selecting on the line itself. The property manager will automatically appear and I can come back and add relations after the fact. If I wanted this line to truly be horizontal while it's highlighted, I simply click the horizontal button. Let's draw one more line and uh, draw it vertically. I drew it a little too short. I can extend the line by left clicking and dragging to make that line a little bit longer. All right, let's go over dimensioning. The smart dimension tool is an all-in-one. We have individual tools for horizontal or vertical and a couple other options, but the Smart Dimension can handle all of that at once. My Smart Dimension tool is now active, and I'll select an individual line to dimension. Left click the line once to select it, left click one additional time to place the dimension, key in your value, and hit enter. That line is now two inches long. All right, now I can dimension not just lines, but between points. So if I click one point and now click the other, and normally, if we're selecting two items, we would use the control key to select both of them. But with dimensioning, that's not necessary. No control or additional keyboard action is needed. If I dimension between those two objects with smart dimension, I'm getting a pure dimension between them. But if I move my mouse far enough right or left or far enough up or down, I'm getting not the pure dimension between them, but a pure vertical distance between them, such as here or a pure horizontal distance, such as here. If I move my mouse directly between the two selections, I get the pure distance between them. We can also add angles by dimensioning between two different lines. 
if two lines are parallel, then there won't be an angle between them, but rather a distance. But if two lines aren't parallel, and I left click both of them with my dimension uh, tool active, I get a angle dimension between them. Obviously, this would overdefine, as we can see here, overdefine my sketch because a horizontal and vertical line already know that there's 90 degrees between them. So this uh, angle dimension would just uh, uh, overdefine my sketch. That's it for this. Look out for part three of the Essentials Primer coming soon. Mm -hmm.